Hello everyone, today I'll be reviewing the very underrated manga series, Yuki Holder. Seriously, you people need to check it out. We begin the series with Tota, this boy living in a country, and it feels that his life needs more adventure in it. His goal in life is to climb atop the space tower. It's like a space elevator, and this is a colony of space and stuff. There's a lot of interesting things going around. And so he just wants to go up there, because one of his friends wants to be a musician, he wants to play a concert. And Tota wants to be the backup singer, so he wants to, you know, have a concert with his friends and just have fun on top of the tower. He doesn't want to be the world's strongest or anything. He just, you know, wants to have a fun life. And one day, a bounty hunter shows up to his village to go after his teacher, Evangelion. We found out that Evangelion is a vampire. Now, what I forgot to mention is that Evangelion is a character from a previous manga series called Negima. Your key holder is a... Is a loose sequel to it. I mean, it has a few references to Negma, but you don't need to know anything about Negma to really enjoy the series. So, so yeah, there's that. But I do recommend you read Negma because it's another fun series about magic. So, you know, just check it out. It's really cool. And the Bounty Hunter pretty much almost kill her. She's, he slices up her limbs and stuff. Told his friends try to protect her, but they just end up getting their asses kicked. Tota ends up getting his arm chopped off and gets impaled. He's almost dead. And Evangelion gives him two options. Either he dies there or she, I mean, he licks her blood and becomes a vampire. And so, of course, he decides to become a vampire and kills, well, not kill, I don't think he kills him, but, you know, defeats the bounty hunter. And that pretty much begins the adventure. He's, Tota joins this organization founded by Evangelion called Yuki Holder. Is you know full of immortals, and along the journey he meets Koromaru. Now, what I find interesting about Koromaru is that he's not, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have a gender. He's genderless. He doesn't have any sexual organs. He can only decide his gender once he becomes sixteen, like a rite of passage or something like that. And what's interesting is that later on in the series, he develops a small crush for Tokta. So he's like. Should I become a girl or boy? Because he kind of wants to become a girl so he can have a chance at being a couple with Tota. But Tota, you know, he's a stereotypical idiotic protagonist. He doesn't care about romance. So it's not like he would be interested either way. But I do find that's very interesting about Kermo's character that makes him stand out more. I mean, I like him a lot more than Tota. Tota is cool and all, but he's kind of like a stereotypical protagonist. He isn't too interesting, but he isn't bad. And so we found out about the different types of mortality. You have regeneration, you know, just keep on regenerating your organs. And I don't think Tota can even be killed by physical attacks. I think, like, later on in the series, his soul gets destroyed or something like that, or almost, and he regenerates even from that. So that's really interesting. You have this other character, Cameron, who's, like, you know, the biggest supporter of Evangelion. He, she pretty much is a lesbian for her. And she can never be harmed, no matter how much you try to hurt her. She cannot be injured, no matter what. So there's that. This is other character who's a cyborg, so he isn't technically immortal. So if you destroy his body, he's still going to die. There's, this is girl. Her power is kind of like in Dark Souls. She makes save points. And when she dies, her soul travels back to that save point. You know, time just pretty much resets to the point which she created that save point. So that's really interesting. And she has the memory she has up to the point she dies. So it really becomes, you know, useful in battles to get information. And, you know, it's really nice. It's nice world building and stuff like that. And you know, Tota is on a mission to find out who his grandfather is. His grandfather is Negi, another previous character from Negi Ma. If you read Negi Ma, you should know about his story. But for some reason, he's gone missing. We don't know what happens to him. He's this legendary wizard, and everyone's looking for him. Especially Fate Aronkis. He was one of Nagi's friends. And he's kind of like the villain in this series. Like, he's one of Nagi's friends, but he has no problem attacking Tota and, uh, you know, his friends. Um, you know, this series does have a n nice adventure. You know, they, they fight bounty hunters and stuff like that. They travel to different places. 
I feel that you really, you'll really love the characters. There are really cool characters. This is another character that I, I can't say too much about his personality. His name is Santa. Yes, that's his actual name. And what's pretty much his case? He's out for revenge. He's a bully victim and stuff. And he's just using his powers to get revenge on all the bullies in life. I really find his character to be very enjoyable and somewhat relatable to me. I mean, I'm not really a bully victim, but, you know, I can sort of relate to what happened to him. You know, you feel sorry for him. And he has a relationship to one of the arc villains. And it's really interesting. It's one of the best arcs I've seen in a manga for a long time. I found it really interesting. You know, just read Yuki Holder. It's a great series. It has nice world building. The, the adventures are cool has r pretty cool fight scenes. The fight scenes are always spectacular. It's kind of like Final Fantasy plus Dragon Ball Z. They, they, they're jumping all over the place and shooting magic and stuff. So yeah, just read it. I promise you won't be disappointed by it. And yeah, that was pretty much my recommendation. There's not much I can say about this series considering how, uh, you know, I have only read six volumes, but I think I might read the rest of the series online. It doesn't have an anime yet, unfortunately. That's what's getting me mad about the anime community as of right now. Because all the animes come now are pretty much the same. These directors are choosing not to animate all the hidden gems. Anime right now are pretty much the same. You keep seeing the Moe Sex Life and the Echi, and I'm not interested in either of those genres. But, but thankfully this year, 2016, this is going to be the year of anime. JoJo Part 4 is getting an anime, that's cool. Berserk anime is coming back. The Gray Man is coming back. Boku no Hero Academy, that's getting an anime. This year is going to be a name for anime. Of course, JoJo is going to be the anime 2016 for me. But that's okay if you think so. Otherwise, just, you know, I have high hopes for 2016 as a year for anime. And that's pretty much my recommendation for you, Keith Holder. What do you think about the series? Do you love it? Do you hate it? Who's your favorite character? My favorite character is definitely Santa. I love his personality. I can relate to him. And his powers are cool. I won't say what they are because they kind of spoil you know, his backstory also. So yeah, there's that. Yeah, so please enjoy Yuki Holder.